Hey, this is Red Band, coming to you live from the world's famous comedy store for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Five and five, get up for Tony Hitchcliffe. Hello, good evening, welcome. Wow, I'm so excited about this. Back on our home court, fresh off of a wildly successful Kill Tony in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Welcome, everybody. Happy Monday to you all. Are you guys ready for a crazy fucking night or what? Come on, I think you can do a little bit better than that. We're streaming this right now, people. Let them know that you're here and that we're live. We're wow. Act we're actually cool. streaming in 360. We are, are. We are streaming in 360 degrees for the first time ever. Yeah. So you can see Ryan J. E. Belt, the house artist, drawing that. See how right he just there. looked up at you? Wow, look at that's crazy. Who's still clapping there in the middle? That's oh, there's oh, it's a, a little delay. delay here. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was we thought we were seeing the real comedy store ghosts there. Um, so here we are. We're live on a Monday. A lot of fun stuff happening. We just did a crazy Kill Tony in San Francisco. We're doing one in Austin, Texas. The show that you're at right now, the number one live podcast in the world, will be at Moon Tower in Austin. April, April 21st. 21st. Yeah. 421. Uh, and I'm doing a bunch of stand-up at a bunch of crazy places. Calgary, Canada, San Antonio this weekend with all my pro wrestling buddies. We're going to the Royal Rumble after that. Wow. Corpus Christi, Texas, Providence, Rhode Island, Calgary, Canada, Chicago, Illinois, Las Vegas, with our friend Joe Rogan. My goodness, what a schedule. Calusa, California, Madison, Wisconsin, Kansas City, again, and uh, yeah, Columbus at the end of May. Columbus, Ohio, I'm doing the Columbus Ooh. Crew Soccer Stadium. That's ridiculous. A fucking soccer stadium. And you get to hang out with me in this scummy shoebox of an attic tonight. How lucky are all of you? I mean, really. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you clap at that. That's Josh Martin. You know him. You love him. He's at Josh Martin Comic on Twitter. So let's jump into the episode, shall we? We got our dates out. We talked about life with people marching for Hillary. Here we are. All unified <laughs> in the <laughs> belly room of the comedy <laughs> store. <laughs> I'm excited, people, and you should be, too. Um, what do we do first? Bring up the band? What do you think, Josh? I guess we're bringing up the band. Um, so let's jump into it. You guys ready for a fun time tonight? Let's do it one more time. We're back in. Post-promo. Uh, what can I say about this band that I haven't said a thousand times before? I love them. They love me. It's a whole part of the unit. They made it up to San Francisco. This is the entire band. Uh, you're a very lucky audience because they're all so busy nowadays making it in show business that we don't always get all three of them at once. So this is a beautiful solar eclipse. Always with a different... I never know what they're going to dress up like or what type of intro it's going to be. It's always a secret that they keep from me. They always impress me every week. So let's see what they do this week. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Kill Tony Band, Reagan, Watkins, and Joel Jimenez. Pat Reagan, Jeremiah Watkins, and Joel, oh my God, that's so funny, I mentioned it for no reason, that's hilarious, blatantly, blatantly doing the Hillary March, dressed as women in ponchos, <laughs> It was raining everywhere, too, wasn't it? It's so funny. <laughs> People in San Fran were just soaked. <sighs> hey, guys, welcome. Hillary Marchers, how's it going? Good, I'm just exhausted from marching. This march shit was pretty fucking crazy. I don't know how close you guys got to it. Uh, I was in San Francisco, and just wit witnessing it was very amazing. Just a bunch of, like, it's amazing because nobody wants to tell their kid like what they're like Trump's saying all these bad things and I don't want my kid hearing it. So I'm going to put it on a sign and make them scream it over and over. A bunch of 5-year-old girls like don't touch my pussy. Don't touch my pussy. Joe Rogan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Your powerful guest. They just came up. The band just came up dressed as uh Hillary uh marchers. <laughs> That's them dressed as women in the ponchos. Uh, Outstanding. <laughs> How's it going, Joe? Better now. I'm here. Got stuck in some traffic? Yeah, uh, people slammed into each other on the highway. Bunch of morons. All right. We're good. I love it. Well, welcome back. You've done this before. I have. We're going to have a lot of fun. And you, you nailed it on the timing. So you came in absolutely perfectly. I'm so excited. 
Uh, was there anything else you guys wanted to say about the Hillary march or anything like that? Are we good to move on? We're ready. We are women. Hear us four. <laughs> I already love this. We'll see how that develops as the show goes on. One more time for the Kill Tony Band and Joe Rogan. Let's start this fucking show. You know how it works, people. I hope you know how it works. This is your first time. Your mind's about to get fucking blown. Because a bunch of crazy people and some of the best future comedians in the world mixed in sign up for a chance to do 60 seconds of stage time. When I pull your name out of the bucket, you get 60 seconds uninterrupted. You know your 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. Aw, oh, that's adorable. That means wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Sure. Uh, so there you go. There's a I'm fucking sorry. cow in there, too. Um, so let's just jump into it. You guys ready to start the show? 60 seconds. Uninterrupted. That sounds more like a bear than our... I thought my shoe was broken. <laughs> You've killed bears with bow and arrows. Only bad ones. <laughs> Only bad ones that taste good. Wow, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, you're pretty good at playing a Hillary supporter. He's not fat enough. <laughs> I don't know. Lift up, oh, lift, up, let her lift up your shirt, Jeremiah. Show Joe what you really are hiding Do under it. there. Do it, it, do it, it, do it, what do you do think? it. Oh, look at that gut. Totally a Hillary supporter. <sighs> I just want to say I feel objectified right now. <laughs> oh. All right, I pulled the name out of the bucket. Here we go. This looks like a new name. Put your hands together for Joey Massaro. Yeah. All right, nice. Just moved to Los Angeles, so now I'm in a long-distance relationship. I don't know if anyone here has been in a long-distance relationship, but uh, I got to tell you, sometimes I get lonely or I'm looking at the moon. I know there's a chance wherever she is, she's probably blowing a guy under the same moon. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend got in a fight recently, too, because she's all in the politics, she's all in the election, and, like, all I do is watch football. That's all I do. And, like, she freaked out at me. She's like, you don't care. You, all you do is watch football. You're 5'4". You never played. Why the fuck do you like football so much? Why the fuck do you like football? Who's your favorite fucking football player? I'm like, right now, at this moment, O.J. Simpson. That's my favorite football player. <laughs> I just love the way that guy finished his career. Went out on top. Oh, my God. My, <laughs> my fucking parents. <laughs> Thank you. My, my fucking parents are out here. They think I'm, like, going to be a magician or some shit. They don't really care. I think the only way I can make my parents par proud if I fucking get murdered by an illegal immigrant just to, like, prove their beliefs. Wow, that sounded more true than a joke. It, it, it did, a little bit. That sounds very honest. Just a little bit. Your parents are a little bit racist? Uh, well... You can tell the truth. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, what, uh, what do you think their least favorite race is? The least favorite? <laughs> uh, to support my joke, I said, I'll say Mexicans. Well, no, you don't have to support. No, it's, it, that's a, so it's Mexican already over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, How rude. No love for tacos? Nah. If, if we so. weren't trying to support your joke, just from what you've heard, the hatred uh -huh. that your parents spill out loud. Yes. What do you th truly think, without trying to be funny, okay. what do you think your parents' least favorite race is? I think it'd be Jews. <laughs> oh God! See how funny of an answer that is. Oh. See how great it is when somebody doesn't try to be funny at all. Just a straight up honest answer. And I'd have to go with the Jews. <laughs> like, it, like he was like he's answering an amazing trivia game or something. What prejudices do they have about <laughs> Jews? Uh, well, we grew up next to a synagogue a lot. <laughs> Too much partying. Uh, I think they would get. They call the cops a lot on us. Oh really? Yeah. Over every what? Every time my parents had people over in the back, they just called. They were pissed off. Wow. wow. My parents invited them all the time. You mean Jewish people would actually, you know, spend the money on the nine one one call to? Uh, isn't that like a? I don't think it, <laughs> it's a good attempt, but I don't think it costs money. I don't think it costs, I know, right? Yeah, money. <laughs> yeah, it hit me when it was. Yeah, I don't think they would call nine one one either, right? They just call uh, the police, we had please. a landline, so pretty cheap. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. So it was the Jews that they hated. How Just close a couple bad apples. Yeah, a couple. 
How close did you live to the synagogue? Uh, I lived on a cul-de-sac, so... A cul-de-sac? Probably like four houses down. With a, You lived on a cul-de-sac that had a synagogue on it. Yeah. Now it's sort of... There we go. Now it sort of makes good, sense. Good childhood. Very privileged. These goddamn Jews blocking my way in. Yep. <laughs> wow. That's what, my uncle right there. Yep. Where are you from? From New Jersey. New Jersey? Yes. There's a lot of Jews in New Jersey. There's a good amount. Sometimes sometimes they even call it Jew Nursey. Not for long. Anyway. Did thank you, you meet a lot of nice Jews at school and try to convince your parents that it's just the bad ones that live next door? You know what? I did meet a lot of nice Jews, but my parents are who they are. I mean, they're going to die soon, so. Wow. Yeah, I mean, what am I going to do? Change them? They, they got their beliefs already. Just got to get them on mushrooms. All right. I'll just tell sneak them in. I'll tell them that. Don't tell them. Just sneak it in. Sneak it in there? Like you said, they're going to die soon. Yeah, yeah. okay. Fuck Put it. Put in the lasagna? <laughs> just yeah. cook for them. Yep. Okay, a little homemade meal. I like Give it. Them a, you get these chocolate bars. You can barely taste the mushrooms. Yep. They'll have so much fun, they're just going to walk straight into the synagogue and yes. start praying. I hope. They might sign up. Maybe look for some Muslim. I don't know. Islam. Who knows? They might just decide, like, who cares what we believe? Let's just join. <laughs> make these people our friends. Uh, you talked about uh, being in a long-distance relationship. Yes. Yeah, what was that all about? <laughs> How long has that been happening? Uh, well, I moved here uh, two weeks ago, so two weeks. Wow. No. Yeah, exactly. What I just want to say, you opened up very relaxed. This is a hard thing to do. You were the first guy up. The first things out of your mouth when you get on stage are always the weirdest to this day, right? Wouldn't yeah. you say? Yeah. And you, you did it very comfortably. And it was, it's a good way to open. You, you planned it out well. It's a smart way to open. It's like, you know, you, you, you kind of establish who you are, and you did it smoothly. So you, you could do this, man. It's just, you know, that stuff. Thanks for the applause, guys. How, how long you been? You could do this. It's like everything else, man. It's just, it's a long road. It's a long, disgusting road. How long you been on stand-up? Three years. Three years, all in New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey, New York. Huh. Where'd you work in in New Jersey? In New Jersey, I went yeah. to the Stress Factory okay. a couple times. Okay, that's a good spot. So you probably saw a lot of funny comedians go through there. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> good batch. Okay, feel good about this conversation or no? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did at the first. <laughs> what the first do you do for work? <laughs> what do I do for work? Yeah, uh, I don't have a job. I worked in a warehouse back there, saved up money, and moved out here. Mm -hmm. So, so you're just burning through your savings? Uh, as of now, yes. Uber in it? You gonna Uber drive? Uh, that's the plan, probably. That's a good move. Get yourself a Prius. Sell crack or something. I don't know. Uh, how do you think? Uh, how long do you think you and your girl are gonna be able to stay separated for like this? Ooh. Answer honestly. <laughs> so you wrote that moon uh, joke in the past couple weeks, right? Why do I feel like his answer is gonna be, "Well, I'm gonna go with the Jews." <laughs> Mexicans. No, I. Uh, I love her, so <laughs> she's probably going to move out here soon. Is that true? Yeah, she's finished in college, so. This Ooh. is too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. You have any uh, special hobbies or skills other than stand-up? Uh, special skills? Hobbies? Anything fun that you like to do? Uh, anything fun? Uh, I make a mean sandwich. Uh, fucking. <laughs> I like food. Uh any, I don't know, no hobbies. What's, what's your favorite category of porn? Uh, category porn, good one, good question. Uh, I'd have to. All go right, with Sean Spicer. Uh, <laughs> let's just answer it. I have to go with threesome. I have to go with threesome. Two guys and a girl, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Mix it up, mix and match. Wow. Ooh. You know, two dicks is sometimes better than one. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> All right. Why do you like? Why do you like uh, threesomes? Yeah, two two girls are in there, and you know. Oh, one's not good enough for you. <laughs> not well, always. I love having females on the band. By the way, I, <laughs> Pat, you could not look any more like Atlantis Morissette right now. I know. <laughs> I mean, uh, it is uh, un fucking uh, believable. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, that's so true. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? You're wearing the poncho. Um, so, Joey, fuck yeah, what did we learn? We learned that you have some good jokes, you have a great stage presence, mm -hmm. and other than that, you have the personality of... He's fine. <laughs> He's nervous. <laughs> this fucking thing's weird, man. He's I know, weird right? up there, too. Yeah, I took some mushrooms before I came here, so... <laughs> 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 yeah, see, now, don't you wish I would have been mean now? Yeah, <laughs> are, you, are you glad? I, I used to yeah. you now, sir. Yeah, fuck. But Joey, you have a good nose for crazy people, though, I'll tell you that. 
Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Tony, Tony Hinchcliffe spots him right away. Oh, I've been pulling. They, they get like one foot on the stage. He goes, oh yeah. <laughs> but Joey, it was nice to meet you. There you go. Joey Massaro. Thank you, guys. He's, he's on Twitter at Mr. Joey Massaro. M-A-S-S-A-R-O. It's a no. hard gig, boys. It right? is. It is. But now we're in it. We're playing with fire. Jamie Vernon on the HD he's cameras. He's Shit, young Jamie's in the house. There he is. I'm rocking my powerful hoodie right now. Hey, Tony. Somewhere. Yeah. Hey, Tony, I wanted to say something. To, uh, uh, I have an album that's out, a new album that's out called Bad Chad. It's out on Spotify and YouTube and anywhere. You just Google it, Pat Reagan, Bad Chad, and you can listen to a new music album by me. So check it out, and then I can. Wow, I can't believe Atlantis Morissette just plugged Pat Reagan's new yeah. album. That is so awesome. Yeah. I didn't realize Pat had a connection with Listen her. to it. It's just my life's work. And I'd like to give a special shout out. Someone very awesome is in the crowd. That woman sitting to the right of Pat Reagan in real life, not a character, is Pat Reagan's mom, ladies oh! and gentlemen. Her first ever kill Tony. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You're the one that made this super genius that we have so much fun with every Monday. Was Pat, a, uh, was Pat a weird kid growing up, or did he just become that way uh, over a long period of time? Uh, kind of was that way all along. <laughs> wow. What was something weird that he did w as a kid with his penis or something like that? <laughs> did he ever put it in anything, or did you ever catch him doing something or fiddling around too much? Jesus. Any anything good? I'm second question. Just, just trying to... Hi, Mom. Uh, let's move on to What the about the kid's question. dick? <laughs> Man, I wish your son. I wish your son could just move on as fast as as fast as you do. Um, oh shit! You, you never saw him do anything. My mom once caught me jerking off. I had a towel wrapped around my waist, and she walked in, and uh, then the towel was like sticking straight out because I had like a young boner, healthy, like young stallion boner. Anything weird ever happened as a kid with Pat? You want to talk about young stallion boners just embedded in my brain now. Before I was Thinking the golden pony, I was just a bronze dick. pony. <laughs> Any, <laughs> there you go. My mom caught me once, and it was so embarrassing because she knew I, I, I was on the couch and I had a blanket over me, so she <laughs> didn't see my dick. Right. But I was beaten off, and she came around the corner and she looked at me, and I pretended I just woke up from a nightmare. <laughs> I go, "Oh my god, I was not a nightmare. I was so scared. I thought I was gonna die." And <laughs> I was 16. I didn't know how to lie. And she didn't even say anything. She just looked at me, paused, and then turned and walked away. <laughs> and now that I have kids, I realize how fucked up that is. Because if my kid told me, I thought I was going to die, I was having a nightmare, I'd be like, oh, but you're not. Everything's good. Look, we're happy. We're here. <laughs> my mom was like, this fucking loser. And she just turned around <laughs> and walked away without saying a word to me. I'll never forgive her. Oh, I love that. I've always held that in contempt. I'm like, God <laughs> damn it, Mom. What if I was scared? That sounds like... <laughs> That's a total true story. That Whenever I see her for the moment before I give her a hug, I think of that moment. <laughs> like, right as I go to give her a hug, you know I beat off, Mom! Mwah! You made me. Been having any nightmares lately, Joe? <laughs> I thought I was going to die, Mom! <laughs> I pulled another name out of the bucket. <laughs> Uninterrupted 60 seconds up next goes to Pallavi Gunnalan. Whoa. You guys, people be raping. They be raping. Um, it's 2017. It doesn't make any sense. Like, why is it so prevalent? Right? We're not fucking Vikings, okay? At least back then you had to grow a beard. You had to build a big-ass ship. You had to sail for three weeks before you got your rape it in. And now any casual athlete's doing it? Are you kidding me? Listen, burn a girl's house down first is all I'm saying. <laughs> right? Like, I feel like there's rape culture, but we don't have rape culture. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's fucked up times. Like, there are all these neo-Nazis graffitiing swastikas everywhere, and that's, like, messed up. Right? Because swastikas are an Indian thing. It's swastika. And the Nazis took that from us. Like, we hated Jews long before you bitches. <laughs> they took that from us. All right, thanks. <laughs> awesome. 50 seconds of Pallavi Gunnelin. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Did you get raped today? <laughs> like, I mean, 
Wow. I mean, Joe's story. People kind of did really it for be me. raping that People much. People be huh? raping. People be raping. I haven't seen. I'm hot off the march. I haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Uh, here right. too, sister. Yeah. <laughs> so funny watching yeah. Jeremiah just get handed something. He almost broke for a second. Like, oh, oh, oh I got to <laughs> uh, gotta say something. Oh, my God. I, uh, they just, it's my whole character right now. <laughs> it just falls on your lap. Didn't have to work for it. <laughs> How long have you been doing stand-up? Four and a half months. Okay. Wow. <laughs> how much how much material do you think you have like overall? Probably like twenty minutes now. Twenty minutes, that's a lot for Good four Lord. And a half months. Yeah. You're really what? you're really applying your like Indian smart work ethic <laughs> to this stand up comedy thing. So when you when you went on stage and you knew you had one minute, how did you decide what to bring up? I've been wanting to do that rape bit for so Jeselnik was here last week and I was like, Oh, I wanna get up and do that rape bit. So I like knew I wanted to do that one in the swastika. Is that joke. the first time you've ever done it? Uh the the rape, the rape bit? bit? No, I've done it before. It has worked better before, <laughs> but I just wanted to do it here. Have, when you've done it before, have you done it in the middle of a set where people already liked you and already knew No, you? I did it at the improv, like at the right beginning away, of the, the set, beginning. yeah. People be raping. People be raping. Don't forget. <laughs> and then the swastika thing, is that it really been happening? This is, it's true. There's actually a, there's a, an Indian temple in, um, I think it's Chatsworth, but I've been there before. And the swastikas, it's really old. Swastikas. It's like, yeah, swastikas. Um, <laughs> That's an no, appetizer. Um, like, yeah, like, please. Like, the early 1900s. It, you we use know it what for, that is? for like decoration all the time. It's like an Indian symbol that means like peace. So they have to have signs Nazis. around yeah. this, this temple to explain why it has swastikas we all over it. <laughs> Huh. It's really interesting. We don't hate Jews, just white people. Well, it was, it was an <laughs> Okinawan symbol. Oh. It was a kidding, symbol that I'm they kidding, used in I'm Okinawa kidding. before that. It's a really ancient symbol. And sometimes it goes the other way. It, you know, it yeah. mixes up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a <laughs> super old symbol that the goddamn Nazis fucked up. Yeah. One, time, one time I did that bit here at the show up, go up, and people like were quiet because they thought we did hate Jews. Like, We didn't have Jews to hate. Like We... That was I think you quiet. should add that part, by the I, way. Yeah, I think I you have, should make yeah. it more real and explain it out. Like, yeah. no, just kidding. You know, we didn't hate the Jews because we didn't, you know, you just need to sort of like, you could stay in that world for a bit instead of just having it be a one-liner. Or yeah. is, is there more to that or is that? I, I did add something to it. I was like, we, like, of course we don't hate Jews. Like, we're, we're lucky enough to not have Jews to hate. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> you did 50 seconds and that would have been... The other ten seconds, yeah, and that would have gotten out on a big laugh. Yeah. Oh uh, well. No, I'm <laughs> just saying, like, it, it's since you're taking it there, you know, you should stay in that pocket for a while. Cool. I think I think you should start off with a different first line, other than "people be raping." <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any you know? Yeah. <laughs> Play rape <laughs> on a summer's day. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Four months you've been doing this. So how do you make your money? Uh, I, I'm a PhD. Stu I came here before one time and I talked about how I'm a PhD student. PhD student. Yeah, I get paid for a fellowship. So yeah, because yeah. she's the woman. She's smart. She can handle both. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're a really hateful woman, Jeremiah. No, I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nasty Je woman. Jeremiah, should, do you have another name? What should we call you? What is yeah? What's your name? You have to transition. You have to have a name. <laughs> it's Daisy. Daisy. <laughs> I love it. Well, that was quick. Daisy. He immediately became Daisy. Stacy, right? Daisy you and no SWAT stickers, SWAT stickers. What's the difference? <laughs> My mom's here. Where's Stacy's mom? Oh, she's Jesus got it going on. Christ. Uh, I love it. So you got Alana, Stacy, and Joel Jimenez. Just looks like he's. A current version of Hulk Hogan, like after <laughs> after getting paid the money. Uh, Joel Jimenez looks like Grimes. <laughs> like he just took down Gawker. <laughs> yeah, I just said Not that. Not a Grimes crowd. Um, <laughs> so your parents are back in India? Are, you fr are they from here? Uh, they are from India, but uh, we lived in Texas, and now they they're live in Utah. Oh, what yeah. do they do? My dad's a civil engineer. Mm -hmm. He's actually currently like running in for like president of the American Society of Civil Engineers. Wow. So I'm really hoping I don't tank his career. <laughs> <laughs> Real party machine your dad is. Yeah. The president of American Civil Engineers. Yeah. I'm running a social media campaign. What's the craziest, <laughs> like most fun thing you've ever seen him do? You ever seen him do like a cake stand or anything like that? <laughs> No. Where you're like, man, I can't believe this civil engineer is 
being very uncivil. I haven't, but I heard stories. I haven't seen him do anything crazy, but I've heard stories of him as a kid. And they, like, because they didn't have the tech that we have now, they just, like, went out and, like, fucked around a lot. So, wow. like, they had, like, firecrackers and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, firecrackers is a pretty extreme Bunch thing. Of fireworks, <laughs> and they'd like ride on top of trains and stuff too, right? That's a, uh, yeah, that's something that do, you're. Can I ask you? you do, do people get angry at you for joking around about rape? Because you had a very funny line: mm-hmm. "Rape culture versus rape culture." That's very funny, and especially after you set it up with all the Viking stuff and all that jazz and comparing it to football players. But does, do people give you a hard time about that material? No, they like it. <laughs> I found I've it offensive, and I wrote a blog immediately. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I shared it. Because it's, uh, it's a very <laughs> tricky subject, even to joke around about it, right? Yeah. I think it helps that I'm a female. It definitely so. does. But still, people, someone could decide that you triggered them <laughs> and get really mad at you. I guess right? they're going to have to not go to comedy shows <laughs> if that's the case. Yeah. Mm, Whoa. But who's the you? bitch How now? dare you make sense? <laughs> 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 oh man, how much longer you have with college? Uh, it's a PhD program, so it's. Not I don't not. I, I don't yeah, know what all this idiot. is. Yeah, you idiot. It's a PhD <laughs> program. So you can d- you do a bachelor's and then you can do a master's, which is generally one to two years, and then a PhD program is like five to six years, and you do like a few classes and mostly like research, and then if after that you can like become a professor or like. Is go that into what you want to do? I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> I think I I'm just trying to like. I've heard that with comedy, like, you have to keep your head down for, like, six to ten years or whatever. What do you mean by keep your head down? Like, just try to get funny and just, like, work really hard for, like, five or six years before stuff starts happening. (laughs) So I just, like, by the time I graduate, I'm hoping that, like, I get good at comedy. There's some perpetual (laughs) open micers. You know, it doesn't matter how many years. I'm hoping that's not me. (laughs) Oh, it certainly isn't. But the point is, is I guess sort of, like, I don't know. There's not a time thing. To yeah. Right. So to Tony, Tony like hasn't even been doing it 10 years now. It's true. Oh, really? Not until May. The kid's a savage. May Look is my May is Look my, <laughs> May is my 10 year anniversary of doing stand up without. It's coming. Powerful Tony. Which by the way, rem- <laughs> which by the way reminds me that it's March uh what is it? March 2nd or 3rd, episode 200 yeah. in the main room of Kill Tony. 200 episodes. Live. Episode 200. That reminds me, I have a new album out. Oh, no. We, we <laughs> you do, Atlantis? What's it called? It's called it's Bad Chad. <laughs> Bad Chad. Huh. It's actually good. It's Pallavi, you got a boyfriend? I'm single. What kind of boys are you into? Indian boys? No. <laughs> wow, that was a strong no. <laughs> it just is a fun Oh, assumption. just because the color of her skin, she likes a certain kind of person? That's gross, Joni. <laughs> I love having this behind me right now. That was like a uh, female Trump. Yeah, that was weird. Daisy <laughs> went away. I'm still transitioning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that Trump canceled Obamacare, Daisy can't get her meds. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Victim number one, Daisy. Um, I've dated like nerds in the past. I'm trying to like branch out. Because I've dated, like, I went to, like, a nerd school, and so I dated, like, physicists and mathematicians and engineers, and now I'm trying to, like... None of the... All the Indians I know, that's what they do, and you got mad at me for asking Indians. They're like, Indians? Fuck no. I'm with engineers and uh, civil engineers. Those guys make horrible husbands. You want to date a bouncer. (laughs) Um, No, they were, like, mostly white nerd dudes. I don't know. Did you get tired of, like, dating smart dudes? Maybe you want to date a dumb dude? (laughs) <laughs> I'll, yeah. yeah, sure, I'll try Would you like dude. to be, like, that would be fun, right? Like, if uh, you're w- very smart, obviously. You're a PhD yeah, student. I mean, I feel like I should, like, branch out and date somebody, like, more creative or something, uh, you know? Oh, you want to fuck other comics. Uh, I see no! No. No, thank you. Bunch of dudes you're working no. with. No, thanks. Trying I'm to pretend. Good. You guys get drunk. Let's watch a movie. Just oh, my God, it's so comedy. hot. I'm going to take really my pants off as long as you can be cool. Just, just keep your outfit. head down and suck it, sister. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that's how it works? That that's so how you guys talk to each other? Yeah, that's a 10-year program she has But you're not about. a real girl, bro. <laughs> All right. can't talk like Excuse that. Excuse me? You can't talk <laughs> to her like that. Excuse me? You can't say put I'm your neck down and real suck it. Girl? Oh, really, Joe Rogan? Really? First of all, you didn't say it. Alanis Morissette said it. Don't be taking credit for her lines. She we said are one. We are women. <laughs> you guys are one. You're like that two-headed Russian kid. Yeah. 
Rush is a phantom enemy. All right. Uh, Whoa, cryptic. Is that in a fucking fortune cookie? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a new Star Wars movie. <laughs> 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 All right, Pallavi. Anything else? What oh, else? I went to India recently, and I did comedy there, and it was awesome. What Whoa. was different? Um, I got to go to three different cities, and it was it was really cool because like I got to go to their version of like the comedy store, uh, uh-huh. which is like the canvas. Man, lab so what? So uh, is the f- is it like? I mean, did you censor your set? Did you? No, I asked them everywhere, and only in one city they were. It was kind of a smaller city, and they were like, "Just don't make religious jokes, but everything else is fair game." And other than that, the other two cities, I could do whatever I wanted, and they got like all my references, and it was awesome. Was I great. once performed yeah. uh, one of the first road gigs that I ever did. Uh, the great Sam Tripoli told me he goes, "Hey, you want to open for me in Modesto, California?" And on the way there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> And I was excited about this. Like It was like my second road gig ever after La Jolla. This is literally, you know, I've been doing it nine and a half years, almost ten. And this was literally like nine years ago. And on the way there, this four-hour drive, I didn't want to be like, I remember I didn't want to be like annoying or anything. You know, so I, I just asked once, I go, you know, what's this show that we're doing in Modesto? And he goes, bro, you're going to love it, dude. It's a convention of 7-Eleven owners. <laughs> From around the world. They all come here once a year to meet at this thing. And I laugh. That's right? a very good Sam Tripoli impression. And it I, takes place and from I, between and I 7 laugh. and 11. <laughs> yes. Very good. Four and hours. I, but I laugh at him <laughs> thinking <laughs> that completely it was a joke. And I remember thinking, my God, that would be fun if it was actually 7-Eleven owners because I would be able to like write jokes about, you know, fuck this. I, I prefer Chevron. You know what I mean? I would have had a whole take on it. But I didn't want, again, I didn't, I just was like a young kid and I didn't want to be annoying. I was so grateful to be on the ride that I didn't ask him. I, I didn't go, are you kidding? So I totally thought he was just kidding. And then we got there and it was actually a convention of seven <laughs> fucking 11 owners from around the world. <laughs> My point is, is basically I've also performed in India before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it was in Modesto, California. Tony Hinchcliffe with the slow burn, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Even though we interrupted his momentum, you still followed through. <laughs> but that's a true story. At the story. beginning, I was like, nah, just hear him out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pallavi. Um, well, fun what was, can I ask you, what was the, the comedy like in India? How were the comedians? Um, they were pretty good. Uh, there are some comics who have come to the U.S. and come to the, the comedy store and seen people perform here, too. So they were, like, they were, it's really awesome. It's kind of, it's pretty young. Like, they have started stand-up there, like, six years ago. And so it's super new, and there may be like 70 or 80 comics total. In Do they like take on a lot of sacred cows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. I try to educate. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just trying to be out here repping. Um, and so it was, it's like, it's pretty. <laughs> Uh, so it's pretty cool that they're like trying to like push comedy because in the smaller city like the the venues didn't even know what stand-up was so you have to explain like what stand-up comedy is even before you're like can i do an open mic here because they don't even know what it is so it's kind of it's really awesome do the venues have a beef with that Uh, (laughs) (laughs) it's another indian cow joke that's my girl betty reagan (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty crazy um, yeah. So how many how many comedians were there in that place that was like the comedy store? Um, so the lineup that night was like it w- I was on a show and it was like six comics I think. And is um, there like a real community? Yeah, so it, it was awesome. Like I went there and I left early because I was visiting family too. Um, but one of the comics I was backstage with him and I was like, oh, so how long have you been doing this and what did you do like when you took a break from it? And it turns out he's like one of the biggest YouTube stars in India and I only found out like after I left. And he was like, he was like huge, and everybody knew his name. And I was just like, oh, what's your name again? Like, who are you? That's crazy that yeah. stand up just mm-hmm. started there recently because Mark Curry has been famous for a really oh, long time. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mark Curry? <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> Pallavi, you were, you're so fun. And by the way, I think you're absolutely shockingly hilarious for only doing it yeah. four and a half months. You're you have extremely, but then I know you did good the last time too. So that's. Two killer minutes that you have for doing it four months. I mean, that's fucking like. I mean, if you say you have twenty, that's incredible. It, you Your seem material like a is really par non. 
Non bread. <laughs> I, I don't even get I that. I had one. some tonight. <laughs> I didn't, I, they missed that one. Non bread. Oh, it's a, yeah. Because I'm brown. It's a non issue. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Social um, cues are telling me to interrupt more. Alanis, everything's going to be quite all right. <laughs> uh, Pallavi Gunnelin, ladies and gentlemen, Thank there you. she goes. She's on Twitter at PaulGun89. Oh. We're having fun. Pat's mom, you having fun? Awesome. Uh, she likes no Rose Chris Battle Cyborg, better. huh? No Chris Cyborg didn't come? She said, Do you guys know what Tony wrote to her? <laughs> Earlier, <laughs> well, I woke up she, to a tweet. She wrote that she was going to come down. To, she's been threatening Tony because he made a joke about her penis. Well, Joe whatever, made me. Whatever. Joe <laughs> basically forced me to make a joke about her on a podcast with me, him, and Dana White after Holly Home beat Ronda Rousey. And on yeah. this huge podcast, we talked about roasting. And you say you told Dana, Tony can roast anybody. Show him, Tony. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not how it works. What do you mean? And I go, who do you want me to roast? He goes, no, Cyborg. We were, you were talking about roasting fighters. Yeah. We said who would be first. Yeah. And we said Cyborg. <laughs> you said and Cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so Tony and I both said something totally inappropriate. And, right. Regarding uh, cutting weight by removing a penis. Yeah. <clears throat> Wow. To which I uh, obviously apologize for. We yeah. were drunk. We were half in the bag, 30,000 feet in the air. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Flying. she has not forgiven Tony. She started threatening him yeah. immediately afterwards. And she tweeted, she tweeted this morning, hey, <laughs> at something other female fighter, Gabby Jiu-Jitsu, who's also a badass motherfucker. Uh, what She's do you also six three two forty. Yeah, that's that's unbelievable. Legit. Yeah, she, a she, strong, reasonable weight for a woman. <laughs> <coughs> Gender is just a social construct. She, she also tagged World Star though. She so tagged World Star and TMZ, and, and, and she TMZ. said, uh, "Hey, she what do you say? Down. What do you say we go to the comedy store for some Kill Tony at Tony Hinchcliffe TMZ?" Blah 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 blah. <laughs> And uh, to which I responded, um, <laughs> Tony writes, I go, yeah, come on down. There's a two-drink minimum. 8 p.m., there's a two-drink minimum. <laughs> but I guess you'll just have some juice. Because she's been convicted of doing steroids. Did you say the juice or some juice? Um, uh, but I guess, you'll, but be I guess you'll just have juice, is oh, right, what juice. I said. Even better. Yeah. Even better. Like, no the. Which, by the way, uh, I don't know whether she got the joke or not, because her response was, ha, 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 ha. Uh... What was it? Yeah, probably, no. maybe. Or but I maybe. invited her. I, and, and, and Chris Cyborg, if you're listening, you're more than welcome to come to this show anytime. Because if you lay a hand on me, that video is going to f- be the thing that I finally needed to put my career into overdrive. <laughs> me getting slapped, choked out. I want it, baby. Please bring it. Hey, it's a weird thing, but that you got to have it, all these things in place to be able to make it. Hey. I will show you her highlight reel, and it will change your fucking mind. <laughs> hey. I know. I've seen. I've seen what she's capable. The good thing is, is that she knows. She, I'll be unconscious after the first thing that she does. Like what if she just slapped me? I would just, oh, I just pass out. So she would show some mercy because she'd be like, I, I killed him. Look. I- Hey, hey Tony. What's that accent? Do I could you? think. I could think. Do that again. How is that? I could <laughs> think of a, like Borat. <laughs> <laughs> it is my. It is my cyborg accent. I have to go to a d- deeper voice actually when I do a cyborg impression. How dare you? She's just a tough, tough lady. Hey Tony, With didn't you also say every time she queefs it causes a hurricane? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Yeah, I remember when Tony I, said. Yeah, I remember when he said that. Didn't Either he also way, say she's a Hulk of a woman? She's disgusting. Didn't he say that? Too? Yeah, no. he said that. By the way, in all in all reality, though, it's yeah. just jokes. Yeah, you know, it's just jokes. By the way, Tony, uh, she and the Brazilians got mad at me for that. By the way, I had a bunch of soccer balls bouncing off my apartment windows for a while. <laughs> Those Brazilians do not have a sense of humor about this shit. By the what way, what are you gonna say, Brian? Uh, Tony, she's actually in the back. And she's been sitting here watching this whole thing. Uh, I talked to her earlier Brian, today. Brian, you are one uh, of the worst guys, actors I've No, I've no, no. Guys, give it up for Cyborg. <laughs> Let's move on with the show. Okay. I would have been so thrilled, by the way. I don't know what you guys are like. I'm not. Ooh, what do you think's going to happen? What I said is true. Cyborg, if you want to come on this show and... When was the last time somebody beat the fuck out of you? (laughs) 
And when was the last time it was a woman? And when was the last time it was the most dangerous woman on the face of planet Earth? Yeah, if wow. you don't know. When was the last time it was a woman that outweighs you by a solid forty pounds? The most powerful woman on mm. Earth is a woman with a voice. <laughs> you son of a bitch! How dare you, Daisy? Trying to talk some sense into him. I'm trying to make him rationalize that you can't be mean to that lady. I want more of this character that you're doing, Jeremiah, by the way. This, is, this is, might be my favorite ever. <clears throat> Just femi- feminist should, Stacey. She start going on stage like that. <laughs> yeah. People would lose their fucking minds because you're the ultimate nice guy and you're walking a beautiful, dangerous line. And it's amazing. Jeremiah Watkins, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. One of the funniest people. Part of Kill Tony, part of Roast Battles the Wave, part of Comedy Central's Goddamn Comedy Jam. Jeremiah's got his hands all over everything. We know this guy. He's been coming here for years. Put your hands together for Darren Chase. Yeah. Keep it going, you guys. <clears throat> Killing it as a comic in L.A. I know that because I live in my car. <laughs> it's not that bad living in your car in L.A., you know? I'm an optimist. Like, you wake up, you're already out of the house. <laughs> Get stuff done. Dating's kind of tough, though. Like, date goes well. Girl's like, take me to your place. I just pull over. <laughs> She's like, no, silly. I don't know, shower sex. I'm like, I don't think 24-hour fitness would allow that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. I smoke a lot of weed. I smoke so much weed if I forget something. It's not a brain fart. It's a pothole. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Darren Chase. Darren Chase coming in at 50 <laughs> seconds. People are doing 50 second sets tonight. Look out. So Darren, I've known you for how long now? Uh, how long have you been coming two, here? Three two, years, three two or three years. years. Three years. Three, this, this is my three-year anniversary. Joe, and also a message board member uh, an, of your message board. Rogan board. Yeah. What's your name on it? Uh, Darren26. All right, dude. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thanks for the inspiration. My pleasure. Wow. That pothole's a very funny oh. joke. No, no, don't. <laughs> oh, I didn't see it. Uh, nothing's funnier in this world to <laughs> me than a miss fist bump. <laughs> I just, if you're wondering what the central core of my <laughs> evil sense of humor is, What's There's worse? nothing that brings me more joy than a missed fist bump. Is a fist bump worse or a missed high five? Oh, they're both uh, terrible. High, high they're high they're both there. What about high a five. handshake? Uh, it's it's handshake? not as good. A handshake's a little bit more like I, that, that one I sort of I feel. I feel like the fist bump's the bigger douche move. So if you go to pull the bigger douche move and there's no one there. Right. And there's right. also like less you could do with it. Like the high five, like one thing I do. High five can be silly. High five can be like, oh, you're so crazy. Like if they oh. miss it. Yeah. <laughs> fist bump can be silly too, but it, it has the point. potential <laughs> <Yeah>. for <laughs> douchiness. You turn yours into a point? Yeah. No, no, you, you just make it a gun. See you later, Make it a gun. <laughs> make it a gun. You get out of here now. And a handshake <laughs> is basically neutral. Right? Handshake's neutral. Yeah. It doesn't really have any... There's no, there's no <laughs> shittiness attached or weirdness attached to a handshake. I just start, if I miss a handshake, I just start popping and locking. So. <laughs> Nobody knows. That was more Jeremiah than Stacy there. I could just <laughs> As they said, <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, Darren, Daisy. you've been doing it a couple few years. You've been on the show a few times. A uh, yeah. little bit that I know about you, you are an amateur professional wrestler. That's true. Uh, and your character was what? A jobber. A jobber? I lose all the time, yeah. But what was your character's like name? What was your thing? Uh, Darren Chase. My finishing move was called the Cut to the Chase. So, God. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You didn't do that in the 50 seconds you were on stage tonight, so that's surprising. Uh, Just kidding. So, Darren, you're, how long have you been living in your car? A uh, year. What kind of car is it? Chevy Cruze, 2011. Chevy oh, Cruze. Shit. Shout out to Chevy Cruze. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Chevy Cruz sounds like Tom Cruise's like illegitimate cousin that he doesn't want anybody <laughs> to know about in Kansas. Now, is, there, is, is there like a parking lot that all the comics that live in their cars they, they all like go to? You know, like like a CVS in Van got, Nuys or I something. I got my own, and it is up it's by a CVS. But yeah. <laughs> so, Wait. do you sleep in your car mostly? Yeah. That's gotta suck. You go to back yeah. seat, or do you extend the driver's seat back? Lean the seat back, curl up in a ball. Driver's seat? Yeah. You curl up into a ball in the driver's seat of a Chevy Cruze. You That's could true. also curl up into an egg. <laughs> oh my god 
<laughs> I'm just yeah. saying, Tony. <laughs> I know you were just saying. Uh, so, Darren, you're in a Chevy Cruze. It's you're called cro- comedy. Oh, <laughs> there you go. You got a laugh on that one. Let's bail back out. <laughs> Darren, uh, so... <laughs> So you're sleeping in your car for the past year, and you have a certain spot. Like, I mean, yeah, I got a little area up in Panorama City. It's it's pretty cool. There's a Denny's with a 24-hour bathroom. Anything crazy ever happened to you in the middle of the night? One guy once tried to wake me up for some weed, but that was it. For just some weed? Yeah, yeah. Wow, he's just walking down a fucking street, and he saw somebody sleeping, yeah. and he woke them up like, hey, man, yeah. you have any weed? Yeah. Because if anybody's got good weed, it's the guy that's sleeping in his driver's seat. Yeah. Just has so much to give away to other people. But then again, the weed could be so powerful that you had to stop and pull over, <laughs> curl up into a ball. So maybe the guy's on to something. <laughs> how often do you get to wrestle amateur wrestling? Like, how often do you get to do that? I haven't done it regularly for a few years. How it's do you make money? But, uh, right now, background acting. I work for Solar City, so a few different things. Background acting? Yeah, yeah. I've been in, like... Adam Sandler's new movie coming out. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Happy Gilmore? <laughs> what? <laughs> Adam Sandler's new film, Happy Gilmore? A new, there is a new Happy Gilmore they're working on right now. Is that true? Yeah. Wow, he finally realized that that's what we wanted all along. Yeah. I mean, that it really is pretty unbelievable, like the drop of quality. I'll oh. tell you what, though, dude. You watch that movie with five-year-olds and six-year-olds. Like, when I watch it with little kids, they fucking think it's hilarious. Happy Gilmore. No, not just Happy Gilmore. All of his movies. All the I Netflix Jack ones? Jack and Jill with my, with my daughters. Really? Yeah, we watch. That's, how, that's what having kids does to you. You sit around watching Jack and Jill. Yeah. Where Adam Sandler plays his brother and he, the sister together. It's funny. It's funny when little kids are howling, laughing. You laugh, too. It's funny for them. But there's a part of Happy Gilmore where he's just meeting chubs for the first time, uh, Apollo Creed, and... Uh, <laughs> And he's still hitting uh, beer cans into a trash can. And Chubbs is like, you could be a great golfer. you got to listen to me. And, he, and he's hitting the things. There's a part where he hits his wooden hand out into the street. I literally, every time I watch Happy Gilmore, I rewind that part about 45 fucking times. And it gets funnier every time. Cause there's a, the hand lands and he goes, it's okay. It's sturdy. It's made of good wood. And the semi-truck just comes, for no reason, just... And then the next scene, he's got this, like, choppy wooden hand that's not fixed. It kills me to my core. And I hate almost all comedy, but there's something about Chubbs' broken That whole movie's hand. very funny. Have yeah. you seen Meet Joe Black? When, when Brad Pitt gets hit by the car, I keep reminding it over and over. Oh, and over. you're crazy, Stacy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Darren, uh, yes. your background work doesn't seem to really like be that much of a consistent job. So, like, yeah. how, like what do you what do you? I, uh, I work for Solar City. So, so what's Solar City? I hang out in Home Depots and I ask people if they have solar, and I that's pretty much it. Hey, do you have solar? And they built yeah. a city out of that. So oh yeah, Jesus, you guys are swinging for the fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, Elon Musk's company, so it's kind of it's Tesla now. So. Oh, yeah. well, that sounds promising. <laughs> Those are some key words that you just said that uh, make it sound like a better job. <laughs> so, are you really getting girls to like go on car rides with you? Some, yeah. I mean, they mostly go back to their place. How but. ugly are they? I, well, you know. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, that did not get a lot at all. A woman's spirit in this, in is on the business. inside of her body, not the outside, Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does that work? You go back to their place. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the end of it. I don't trust Elon Musk. Right. Now, what? Do you ever. Uh, Why don't you trust Elon Musk? Because he's. Oh, I, I watch interviews with him, and he, he's a loon. He's like a, he's like a cult sort of leader, and I don't think his vision of the. I just think he's. You mean he's the shit. CEO of a company? When he's you a billion, say a cult he's a, leader. Okay. He's, he, I don't trust him. <laughs> Why who, not? Who do you trust? What? Why not? Well, did you see the Werner Herzog documentary uh, about the internet? Yes. His interview with him, and he, and he was talking about how he had nightmares. Now, that's fine that he has nightmares, but um, I, just, I just think. Did he really have nightmares, or did he just get caught jerking <laughs> off by his mom? You know what I mean? That's the real question. Wow. Powerful Tony. <laughs> That's what a home run looks like, everybody. <laughs> so what, what, what about it bothered you so much that you're like, fuck Elon Musk? Because I know if he was sitting here right now, you probably wouldn't be saying fuck Elon Musk, right? Well, if he was on the panel, not. No. Nah. 
But if you met him, would you be like, fuck you, man? No, I don't say that to people. Right, but you're like saying it to like a million people. <laughs> I don't, I think, I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a Would you ever buy one of his products? Like oh, backpedaling. Here would you goes. ever buy one of his products? Would you ever buy one of his products? A, uh, I don't know. I mean, Tesla. I mean, yeah, would yeah. you ever buy a Tesla if you could? I'm going to stick with my guns. Fuck Elon Musk. The guy's wow. a fucking loon, dude. But I still don't understand why you think he's a loon. We'll, we'll give you a chance I to think, express yourself. I think a lot of people are loons. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, you know, I'd rather not you know, get, go too deep here, but <laughs> I, I, really, I really think he's a fucking loon with no vision of the future. Wow. I seriously thought he was a cologne brand this entire time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Ground rule double, everyone. (laughs) I don't think you get to be a super genius without being a little odd. I yeah. think you got to look at the guy's accomplishments. They've been pretty stellar. It's amazing. He's what always you... involved in these super successful companies. When you hear him talk about technology in the future, he seems very measured, very aware, very intelligent. But yet he has to deal with fuckheads like you. He has yeah. a he has a sci- <laughs> he has a Scientology. Call he has him a, a loser. He has a, he has a Scientology quality about him. That, it's called being that really fucking me. smart. That bothers me. Did you uh, see when he was on the Colbert's night, uh, the, the Late Show? And he was talking about polarizing Mars. He said he'd drop nukes on. Colbert goes, oh, you're a super villain. He was like, oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's a fucking he's villain, dude. He's the bad Mars guy. He's the fucking Mars. bad guy. He's going like, to drop nukes on the poles to, call, to change the climate of Mars. He was saying. Oh. Darren, well, that, how nothing are you, lives there. How are you Elon watching? Musk is a friend of rich people. Okay, Boom. Pat, that's it. Pat, he's Pat, a fucking Pat, loon, Pat, dude. Pat, 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 right. Pat. What the fuck is going on? Byron what Bowers is heckling. That's, that's oh, what Byron! He the show's Byron? hit the skids. Powerful Byron Bowers. Byron Bowers is heckling. What'd you say, Byron? I got rich friends. Byron's got <laughs> rich friends. Congratulations, Byron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Darren. Well, what did we learn today about you? Uh, what, what's your plan to get out of the car? Uh, you saving money at Solar City? Putting away a little bit of time. I should be uh, good in a few months, I think. When you're or hooking up with York. chicks, when you get back to their place, do you ever put on your wrestling tights and uh, cut to the chase? You know what I mean? It's the finishing move, Tony. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> wow. All right, there he goes, Darren Chase, everybody. He's on Twitter at Darren Chase. <laughs> Takes some serious balls to stand in front of a bunch of people and tell them you live in your car. Yeah. It, it seems like a lot of comics actually do live in their car, though. There's been, yeah. like, one out of four open mics. It's a cool story when it's over. Yeah. You know? Like, after yeah. it's done, you're like, dude, I used to live yeah. in my car. Check out my pool. And it, You know? It, it, it definitely only Once works. Once you're balling. Yeah. It definitely only works when it's, like, a success story. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, once you're balling. It's true. <laughs> Byron Bowers, probably on acid again. <laughs> Are you? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> what do you do, microdose? I didn't want to freak you out. <laughs> if I was on acid and somebody called me out, I'd be like, no. <laughs> I got to get out of here. <laughs> this is too fucking real. I read a great thing about microdosing the other day. I've done it a bunch of times. I got some. Make you feel good? Allegedly, I got some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. It should be legal, 100%. You mean microdosing, like taking it a small amount every yeah. single day for a yeah, long period? No, you don't have to micro. You can microdose just one time. It's just like instead of taking a dose, take a microdose. You, it's totally functional. The thing yeah. about it is powerful Byron Bowers. You don't hallucinate. You go to my Instagram, you see a picture of a Byron at the post office high on acid. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a microdose. No big deal. Just he licked the packages stamp. With a big smile on his face. <laughs> he licked the stamp, Pat said. Yeah, I just, I just think it should be legal. You know, it's, it's, you could fuck yourself up with it, but you could fuck yourself up with everything. Yeah. You know, and people do every day. And it, it helps people in a lot of ways. Yeah, like love. It could be no time at all. I remember it was just recently I was sitting right next to you live at the End of the World podcast in the main room when we found out that marijuana was legalized for the first time ever. That was awesome. We lit up a joint. I have a big old framed picture of that. When Bert came out and told us and then took his shirt off and started swinging it in the audience. It's one of the greatest pictures of all time. It's so awesome. The whole audience has their arms up in the air because it's at that moment. They realized wow. this thing that they had known their whole lives, that there's nothing wrong with it. Finally, it makes sense now. Finally, it makes sense. And finally, it's legal. And we were all cheering like it was honest, 
it wasn't prepared. We didn't know it was coming because Bert just came out and told us, and everybody's reaction was just totally spontaneous. It's pretty awesome. Pot's legal, motherfuckers. I pulled another name out of the bucket. 60 seconds uninterrupted goes to Bruce Gray. You got movement up there? There he comes. It's Bruce Gray, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, y'all? Yeah, girl I used to have a crush on in high school followed me on Twitter the other day. Must have heard I was popping. Went over to see what she was up to. Uh, went over to look at her Twitter. A lot of troubling stuff is what she's been up to. First thing I see on her Twitter says, if any guy wants a chance with me, he better love eating ass. I was like, okay. I don't love it, but I can maybe make this work. Next tweet said, uh, <laughs> I literally eat at Panda Express every day. I was like, okay. <laughs> maybe a chance isn't what I need right now. I think I'll be fine without a chance. Did you guys see that not to get punched? How fun was that? It was a fun thing. It's good old-fashioned American fun. I don't know. I hope that's like the new form of assassination, because like, if there was a video of Donald Trump getting shot in the head, I could probably watch it five times. But if there was a video of Donald Trump getting knocked out like he was on World Star, I could watch that hundreds of times and be just fine. Cool. Thank you guys very much. Bruce Gray. I can't believe you're that anti-Donald Trump since you look, <laughs> you look like Baron if he got locked in the pantry oh, for a year. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. How dare you talk about your father uh, that way. My daddy. <laughs> yeah. It was a very fu- You opened up with a very funny, pre- like the way you stated that premise. Anybody wants a chance with me, better love eating ass. It was very funny. And it's one of those things where you hear and you go, wow, there's something there if he waters it. You know, if yeah. you like, if you keep going with that premise, there's something hilarious about someone having like some ridiculous demand like that yeah. on their Twitter page. Yeah, and just being a gross TV. person. She's it's very funny. She eats at Panda Express every yeah. day. I don't. It, just, it made me smile. So like, there's like, there's totally something. I'm there. really surprised that you don't eat ass <laughs> since you spent years <laughs> working at a chocolate factory. <laughs> You yeah, oopa stri- loompa stretch, looking I, motherfucker! I like For good. those of you that didn't get that one, or filling out your bills, <laughs> no, that I'm, wasn't I'm that poor. Good, I can't. <laughs> he looks like I'm an oopa loompa. That wasn't that good. Oop. That was, a big, that was a big stretch. Bum. But you, <laughs> a stretch. But don't, but don't you agree about that? For his first premise is very funny. Like, yeah. there's totally something there. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's like really? and it was funny. It was a funny way to start a set too. Like I, it geared me up for laughs. Like I'm like, okay, this is gonna be good. Cool. Thank you, man. You're welcome. You did good. You had a tough job of resetting the room from an awkward energy. Oh, and yeah. I think you did good I was at that. pushed so far yeah. into the back that I didn't see what happened, but I'm kind of glad I didn't. I you guess. did so good. Pat dropped the girl voice. Just <laughs> <you know what's laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pat became Thanks, a dude Pat. again. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you live in your car? No, I don't. Congratulations. <laughs> my, yeah, thank you. No. You live with no. your parents? No, I live in a I live in like a big house in like a it's in a country club, but I have like nine roommates. Wow. It's fun though. Yeah, it's, it's called cool. white privilege. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't know. Whoa. Daisy, cool. aren't you white too? <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so how you're living at a country club with who? Like nine random people. I live in it's like a big house. It's just boring. Like I don't know. I thought it'd be cool. It's you just a bunch not. of roommates. Yeah. But it's but a it's country club. Yeah, it's like a big house that some dude bought and then rented out each room individually to make more money. Oh, wow. That's actually a smart move. It's a really smart move. The house is, like, falling apart. He's, a, he's a bad guy. <laughs> he's a bad dude. Like, he, he built this house like shit, and I, it's like... All the, all the neighbors are normal people, and it's full of scumbags like me, basically. Mm. Yeah. What's the worst thing about the house? Um, there's a, the, uh, the laundry... Thing it kind of just like there's just a pipe coming out of the wall at like a this kind of angle and it just shoots water sometimes like a like a hose. <laughs> it's like I pay so little rent that I, I'm afraid to say anything about it. Really, <laughs> I just want to keep continuing my life semi comfortably and not worry about it. Well, there's That's definitely honest. something very funny in that what you just said. Do you talk about that on stage? Yeah, I talk about having a lot of roommates and like uh, yeah, it's funny, dude. How low is your rent? I pay. I share a room with another uh, guy, and I pay three fifty. What? Three fifty a month? That's ridiculous. Wow, that's I like know, a storage it. unit. That's yeah. <laughs> no, it's a sweet room. It's a nice room, and it does a house with a pool. And uh, wow, yeah, that's uh, nice. Good but deal. That's why I don't want to talk to my landlord ever. 
<laughs> I just want to keep living this way. Yeah. By the way you're shaped, I thought you and your roommate were splitting the kitchen. <laughs> oh. You son of a bitch. <laughs> You can't help yourself. Oh, I can't. Man. What do you What do you do for work, Bruce? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm unemployed right now, but I'm getting unemployment. So it's I got a. I used to work at an office, and then uh, it was like a shitty startup that was just a terribly ran business. And then they had to downsize, and so they they fired me basically. Mm. I don't know. They fired me, but they told me two weeks before they were going to fire me. Like, hey, we're going to fire you on the 16th. So <laughs> get ready for that. That's uh, nice of them. Yeah, I know. It's pretty Let's cool. Consider it. How long have you been doing stand up? Uh, almost five years. It'll be five years in, I think, June. Do you, are you getting paid at all? Uh, sometimes. Like, uh, it really, like, I mean, did a few shows out of town, I think, three weeks ago, like uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we got paid. And how but often a week do you think you get on stage? Uh, I mean, especially getting more. I got up on stage last week 23 times. Wow. But, uh, Ooh. Thanks for that. Thank That's you. Great. Thank you. Hustle. I'm very sad. Uh, the jump man. It's, hustle. Hustle. it's good, especially like being un- I'm just trying to get up as much while I'm unemployed. Until I have to go it's a good move, be man. a slave again. How long do you get unemployment for? I, th- has, I don't know, honestly. I think a few more months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Nine roommates, huh? Yeah. But it's like, there's like a, st- <laughs> there's this dude, it's that's what I'm saying. This dude not. is such a piece of shit. He turned the garage into like a studio. Like, there's no garage door. He just built over the garage door. Like, and just put two more people. So, like, it's really seven. I never see two of them. Because two of them live in the garage. Yeah, basically. Wow. But it's t- How many t- bathrooms are in this house? Too, but also one in the studio. I, man, oh jeez. <laughs> Wait, is what he's doing legal or no? That's yeah. That's I don't super, know. That's super illegal. Yes, it's definitely probably illegal. Yes. It's definitely illegal. If somebody knows a way I can make yeah. money off of this, talk to me after the show, and I'm totally <laughs> Byron's Let's losing yeah. his can shit. Can we get right like now. a Adam Carolla show where he calls like a like a <laughs> con strike, he comes out and just shows how shitty the house is built? Wow. What, what race is the guy that owns it? Oh, that's a uh, good man. question. Good question. I'll I almost don't want to say now. He's a, I think he's a, a gentleman of Indian descent. Oh, Ooh, oh. man. We've really, uh, we've really crossed the streets. So, <laughs> no, no. I mean, we've heard think, a little something about all your least about favorite it, races. If you think yeah. about it, it makes sense. An Indian yeah. guy owns it. It's a numbers game. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> look, look how much money yeah. that guy's making. I'm kind of glad I didn't see whatever weird happened before this because like, all the weird hints going off right now are making me almost, I don't know. Okay. You f- you find it. So sometimes there's two bathrooms in this place. So say sometimes you're in there taking a shit, right? Yeah. I mean you, you are on there pooping. That Me. means <laughs> that there could be multiple guys waiting to use that bathroom. Oh no no yeah yeah. yeah. So the one and they're the bath- like yeah the bathroom I use it's like me and like four other people that wow. use. It. You guys like do you guys like leave your toothbrushes in that bathroom and no, stuff? No, I don't do that. Everybody like packs separately and just brings in a thing. Basically, like it's, it's like a, yeah, it's like a a, a weird like. 24-hour fitness. Yeah, but it's like wow. a 24-hour fitness. Yeah. A wow. 24-hour fatness, yeah. whatever it's <laughs> yeah. going to be. Oh, my God, Tony. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, for the monster. Pr- I mean, for the price, that's way better than no, I, like I'm a totally car. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm out pretty much. I'm out every night, so like, that's I great. just go there and sleep, maybe right, and then leave. Hmm. Well, there you oh, go. Dude. Aren't you a jolly little fella? I am, dude. I'm, a <laughs> I'm jolly. I'm very... I like your style, Bruce. Funny Thank stuff. You. Five years... Keep yeah, going. We'll see you again soon. Cool. Bruce Thanks, Gray. All right, Bruce. He's on Twitter at Bruce Gray. Nice to meet you, man. People are making fun of that poor Baron kid a lot, huh? Yeah. I think he's adorable. I think he's cool as fuck. Me too. Like, I like just watching him. He I just know. Seems cool. I think he's like the... I think we should be fucking proud to have this little, little blonde eat. baller in yeah. our fucking White House. Daisy, do you think people could be transracial? Absolutely. Why do you think that is? Because I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I'm trying to decide <laughs> what it d- means. Which no, one? Whether I'm on board with transracial. Oh. It's like the really? Rachel <laughs> Delbazal person. If, yes, you, if exactly. you had to fuck one of them, if they were real women, which one would you fuck? Either Get Joel, your mind Jeremiah, out of the or Pat? Or Red Band? Seriously, who? No. I already picked. I would pick Joel. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. Joel, Joel. looks like a great blonde. Look yeah, at his it, it fucking is. features. He has, he has very nice cheeks. <laughs> I I chose that for his his bone structure. Real exotic. Uh, is Gallagher coming up later? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys wearing raincoats? <laughs> oh, because it was the raining march. during the marches. We've been marching for so oh, long. It's been marching. raining. The inclement weather. We've been oh. at that a long time. <laughs> and ponchos were ninety nine cents each at the dollar store. 
I pulled another name out of the bucket. 60 seconds, uninterrupted, goes to Michael Scott. Is there movement up there? You, you see anybody moving, guys? I guess he got stuck at the office. You guys see you guys see movement up there? Can you signal something? Nobody moving? Then that means one thing. If somebody misses their spot now, you know what happens. And they've split up on the one by one, doing the new solo act for the first time ever. So this situation will not be the Verzi triplets. It will be Mitchell Verzi, ladies and gentlemen. He's gone solo. He's flown the coop. One of the three triplets. What's going on? Uh, yeah, so I'm a triplet. And uh, <laughs> uh, we have an older brother, too. And I got made fun of the most, clearly. Uh, I always try to do my own thing. Like, I write poetry. Or as my brothers call it, faggot writing. Um, I don't know what it is. I like it. I like it. Uh, and as Tony likes to point out, every time I'm up here, I have a lisp, uh, which comes out when I have to say the word lisp. Uh, a lisp is like an alarm that lets everybody know that God hates you. That's just <laughs> kind of what it, I don't know how to get rid of it. Uh, yeah. Poetry and a lisp in a household with three brothers. Like, I'm still convincing them that I'm not gay, you know? And when I was 13, I grew my hair out. And uh, they decided, all right, perfect time to cut it. So what they did is they held me down, and they got a pair of clippers. And I got really flustered. And I was trying to get, I was yelling at them to get them to stop. But it came out as, stop! Stop! I'm serious, guys! Finish. And, uh, you know the... No, you're not allowed to do that if I tell them to finish, Brian. You're out of control. The fact you that hate these Verzi triplets I didn't hear you say so finish. much. It's I amazing. How I much did not you... hear you say finish. All right. The Jesus. fact that they care so much about my hair is kind of gay, just a little bit. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> that was the ending. Jesus, Sorry. dude, you got you got <laughs> si- you got side railed or yeah. by derailed yeah. rather by a hissy fit. Yeah. Um, but funny wh- shit, man. Hundred percent better than I ever. Like way better than. Than any time we've ever seen you before. Like Th- that was you. right, guys. Like I would like to see now. Someone you'll know. I would like no. They know. Yeah. Every time we see you, it's your brothers, and it's this big cheesy bullshit. We've well, seen it but before, right? Where they hand off the microphone, and all three of them have mics at the think, same time. Oh, you've never seen the Mercy Trip. It's like carnival. No, cruise. it's hey. not that. Well, do we <laughs> have a surprise for you? The boys are in the. They, back. they literally yeah, are. Well, they well, are. Let's up there. just clarify. How many other people in the room knew what Brian was talking about? Couple people have seen it before, yeah, so you have seen no, him do the. They're on every episode. Before. Well, here's the thing: like the Versi trip. If we have three people on stage at the same time, we can't dive into each individual personality without taking up 45 seconds. You know, it's it's tough. Right. It's just easier for us to clump together and do a bit that way. Why do you think you're the one with the lisp? Why? Yeah. yeah where does the lisp come from? I have no idea. Something doctors don't know. They don't have no idea. I, you know, I didn't have it for a long time, and I broke my nose, and I think maybe that may have something to do with it. You broke your Whoa. nose. And How then old you were you when you broke your nose? Like 13. Oh, yeah. And that's when you started lisping. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I never got it fixed. <laughs> we were playing football, and I got whatever pushed into a fence, and it just broke it. And my brother's like, all right, we'll put it back in place. And they just cranked Jesus. it back in place. Does your brothers have, like, that smirk with your lip also? Because it, maybe that's connected. What? Like how your mouth kind of goes sideways on one side. Oh, I don't know. I think that's... Did they do that too? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> when, uh, when now I do see that your nose was broken. I can't sort of yeah. see. It's got a little C shape to was it. Was your palate broken too? And how bad was the injury? Oh, I don't know. Because if, sh- if you shatter your palate and it pushes the shape of your face in, yeah. it'll, that, change, that been it'll it. change the way you make noises with your face. Yeah. And your lip. Yeah, because it change, literally it changes the musical instrument of your mouth. It happens to people sometimes. Yeah. Like when people get their nose broken, it definitely changes their voice, but I've never heard of it giving a lisp. But if you got well, your palate know. broken too, it's possible. Yeah. I'll, I'll it's only it out. dark shit. <laughs> There's yeah. only one way for us to know. It's time that we break the other Versi triplets' noses. <laughs> Have you ever? We got to bring Cyborg in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get him down here. And ever head kick your brothers. You guys, I, was, you I was hoping Cyborg was here because I, she for some reason like randomly commented on one of my pictures. Really? Yeah. Well, she's been researching Tony for a while. Well, what, did, it, what did she say on your picture? Well, it was, I, I forgot what UFC number it was, but I posted a picture of myself and Rose Namajunas side by side because I think we look alike. Mm-hmm. 
And she's just like, she just commented on it randomly saying, really cool. And that was it. Mm. Wow. Because she's a supportive woman. She's probably woman. high as she's fuck. A, maybe. Yeah. That's just probably what it was. in front of the computer just, I'm just going to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you, you, so you in the picture you and Rose looked alike? Yeah, we have a very similar haircut. Or when I cut my hair at the time, we did. Huh. Do you think Flood she like when you punches and kicks the keys when she types? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um. So Mitchell, yeah. How else are you different than your brothers? <sighs> Fuck! I don't really know, man. Do you we're smell the, the we're same? The same j- I don't know. I mean, do you I, can't, I can't really smell either. That's do you wear thing. cologne? Same deodorant. Oh, dude, you gotta get your nose fixed. I'll get yeah. it checked out. Yeah, yeah. 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 You probably, I, I had it done. I had a deviated septum from That's, being I broken have that a bunch sure. of times. Yeah, yeah. They go in there. They, they cut out all the bad shit and uh-huh. put tubes in there and pack it. It takes two weeks and okay. then you're better again. But in two weeks, you'll be a totally new human being. Aren't you the yeah. one that had a Band-Aid on the cold sore a few yeah, weeks ago? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. So and I that, that, thing, that took least. two weeks yeah. that to go away. almost three, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Maybe, maybe the lisp is from herpes. <laughs> <laughs> could be. <laughs> could, could be. Could, could be from something. Yeah. But yeah, no, we, I mean, we had the same job. Like, we all, we, dra- we work for our dad. Right. In construction. We all drive in the same truck together. Oh, my God. pick up garbage. And you, like, all have the same packed lunches and shit every day. <laughs> I'm playing doctor same here. Same outfit. I'm playing doctor here, but when does the lisp come on? Does it come on if you're flustered or if you're trying to get more air, if you're trying to talk faster or I don't louder? Know. I honestly don't know. I don't notice it. Tony, I, I mean, Tony's the one that picked it out. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, there we go. Whoa. Any, oh, that's, it, that's my brother, Alex. Any, it seems anybody like that's your, listening. Your tongue is, keeps knocking into your teeth. Like, if I had a guess, and I'm not a doctor, yeah. Yeah. somebody fucked your teeth up, bro, and they pushed your teeth in when your nose got broken. It like, the whole maybe. thing pushed in. Because well, it seems like your tongue is, like, struggling in there. It keeps banging up against your mouth. Yeah. So then th- the, the full <laughs> word doesn't come out right because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fucking with the, the door. Well, I had braces, and I never wore my retainers, so Gate. maybe they're shifting uh, around. Yeah, you got some, oh, yeah, that's what's going on. Oh, and right. that, and then that was when you were around 13 years old. Yeah. That was, it was all around that same time. So uh, just yeah, look here. Here That's right. Mike Schmidt has figured out what I figured out. Right. I don't think it was your broken nose. Okay. I think that the top of your mouth, because I can sort of see it, you do have a uh, what they would call an underbite, correct? Yeah. A very, so, yeah. Like a very shih tzu. prominent Like one. a shih tzu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a bulldog. And your tongue is bouncing off of those top teeth, and you yeah. didn't wear your retainer, which happened at the same time as... Yeah, I think so. ...the broken nose. Yeah. So not only should you get your nose fixed... I should start <laughs> wearing my retainer. It's time to wear the retainer. I mean, you already this have cold great. sores. It's not going to take away yeah, any of your I, I should start. Give, I should start caring about my health a little more. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Think <laughs> you think that's a triplet thing, not caring about your health because you don't want to seem like a, 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 a the weakest link. I feel like that would be more reason to care about my health, right? Sorry. <laughs> All right, dude. Doctor Rogan and Hinchcliffe, my bad, guys. Mitchell, yeah, we, we, I think we've we solved. Your I think we have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go get your f- go, get, go get your face so fixed, Mitchell. Cool. Yeah, I will. I'm yeah, glad, I'm glad that we finally did get to speak one on one with yeah. one of the Versi triplets. I hey. do like this. We'll see how this develops. It's very funny though, dude. Thank really you. There he goes. Job. Your first really Versi triplet, Mitchell Versi. We're gonna have another Versi triplet on next week. I like it. Uh, way better. It was funny. You, normally, Smooth. normally there's three of them at once, and they all like finish each other's sentences and everything. Maybe that's the problem. Like you're always fighting to, yeah. and since he finally had one chance on stage by himself, wouldn't it be crazy though if they of? all started doing it separately and then had to fight to, like each other? Like which one's the most popular? Like they one was like headlining. Well, I, I honestly think that this three people doing it themselves thing is like a psychological game that will break up the Verzi triplets. Yeah, I, I agree. Less or more fucked up than Elon Musk. One of them's gonna. One of them's. Since gonna your go. opinion's so awesome. <laughs> one of them's gonna go full. <laughs> Man, Joe Rogan is feisty. <laughs> Put your hands together. You know him, ladies and gentlemen. Comedy store employee, former guest on the Joe Rogan Experience. Put your hands together for Mike Schmidt, oh, everybody. I hope you like poems. <laughs> this first poem is called Downtown Los Angeles. Like the quiet rain, a gentle pitter 
the softest patter. Ballerinas dance into your ears. I am the sound of masturbating hobos. <laughs> this next poem is called Modern Love. I'm supposed to pick a restaurant, but all I want to eat is this revolver. And in honor of the parade, this poem is called Womanhood, number 28. <laughs> like a powerful storm, ever shifting, always rising, changing, growing. I hate all my sweaters. <laughs> Thank you very much. Exactly one minute. Very funny everything. All the way around. Mike Schmidt. Hey, how long have you been on stand-up? Uh, two months less than you. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. you did it all in where? Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, yeah. 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 Madison? Yep. Yeah. Madison, oh, Wisconsin. Very yeah. cool. Is that where you went to college? Yeah, yeah. It, where are you from? I'm from central Wisconsin. I'm from Port Edwards, Wisconsin. Gotcha. So if I did the hand thing, it's right in the middle. Gotcha. It, it's a swamp town. It's beautiful. And you've worked at the comedy store now for how long? Uh, like a year and a half, I think. Yeah. And you're how old? I am 37. And you have a, some crazy degree or former job or something? Oh, a lawyer, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a doctorate in jurisprudence. It's a fancy way Ooh. of saying that I can take people's money because I know what words mean. You sound like a... <laughs> Mike, you sound like a late-night NPR DJ. W yes. W that plays electronica. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have yeah. another poem for you. Yeah. Vince McMahon. So, so you can actually lawyer up right now if you wanted to? No, no, uh, because I'm not licensed to practice in the state of California. You, is that a test? It, there is, it is a test, and a lot of people fail in this state. We you need to pass? I didn't take it here because oh, here's the thing. In California, anyone can take the test to be a lawyer. Oh, when you, when you decided to become a, uh, a shady lawyer, is that when they gave you that Better Call Saul haircut that you have? Yes, yes. Actually, no. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you are a criminal defense attorney for more than 12 years, you have to have a ponytail. If uh, you've ever watched any crime show, uh, yeah. the guy that's getting it, it was like, whoa, your client went to prison, and it's always a guy with a ponytail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking always. Were any crazy cases that you had? Not that I can discuss. Nothing oh. fun. Oh, that's yeah. how it works, yeah. huh? Mm. Yeah. What it's about any ones that yeah. you can't discuss? I, uh, yes, a lot. <laughs> Shit gets nuts. Um, I'll tell you, if you want something, very often uh, defendants are not sexy. D hot defendant is the rarest thing in the criminal justice system. <laughs> like race, ethnicity, no. Hotness. So what's the... Why do you think that is? Hot people don't get in trouble? Or, like, Have you talked to them? No. <laughs> When's They're the last time you cried? Uh, Good question. Oh, okay. Uh, Tuesday. Wow. <laughs> What'd you cry about? My dog. Ooh, what, what about happened? it? He died. Oh, oh, Jesus. What did it do? Go on the Hillary march? <laughs> It doesn't even make no. sense. That was Jesus, that's no. Tony, we're just <laughs> hoping for a Hillary yeah, March idiot. reference. Yeah. Like, yeah. force it in. I'm an idiot. Shoehorn it. Yeah. Wow. It was a fair attempt. How dare you drag her yeah. name into that joke? <laughs> wow. How long have you, How long did you have your dog for? Uh, 14 years. Oh, my oh. God. What yeah. kind of dog was it? Yeah. Soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. Just oh. stop it already. What, what, what was his name? Wembley. Wembley? Oh, yep. oh yeah. Yeah. fuck. Yeah. Did you put it to sleep, or did you find it, or did you like it get hit by a car? Uh, no, he got put to sleep because he had a lot of things failing. Oh. Wow! Yeah. With a voice like yours, did you just read him a book? And he yeah, and he got fell put asleep, to sleep, yeah. or no? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. The pistol joke is very funny. Yeah. Yeah, very hilarious yeah. stuff, Mike. I mean, you're doing yeah. it. Thank I, you very much. What's your favorite thing that's happened to you in your year and a half working here at the comedy store? Well, I liked being on. Joe's podcast. Okay. That was probably the most fun because it was on the 4th of July and that was, so it was a super, super fun 4th of July. Yeah, and Wembley was still alive. Everything yes, was, was good. Yes. My <laughs> dog was not dead at that time. So not only was I in the podcast, but I got to pet my dog. Thank you for reminding me, Tony Hinchcliffe. You're welcome. Yes. It was a great episode. All your yeah. stories about being a criminal defense attorney, they're pretty intense. Yeah. You know, I met 
Mike when uh, we were in the parking lot one day. We just had a conversation, you know, and he was working here. And he started talking about all the crazy systematic racism that he had to deal with yep. when he was working at the store. And uh, – or, excuse me, working uh, as a lawyer. And uh, <laughs> Store's not racist. Store's <laughs> <laughs> Let's well, be honest. Please I got, I got confused there for manager. a moment. But your, your stories are intense, man. Yeah. So it was a crazy – it was a crazy podcast, very revealing, and yeah. a, lot of, a lot of people really enjoyed it. So thank you for thank doing you. that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're killing it. You're a smart guy, Mike, and you're treating Thanks, the job. But you know, it's one of those people where okay. he's doing it right. Mike Schmidt. He's on Twitter at the Shinola. What do you guys think? Should we go to the bucket one more time? Huh? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Why not? Right? What do you ladies think over there? We know you like to get in and out of work as fast as possible. Yeah, let's do one more. <laughs> My anti-women joke are not working at all tonight. Oh, speaking of women, we know this young lady. She's been on the show a couple times. Put your hands together for Kirsten Alberts, everybody. Thank you. I worked as a waitress in a strip club once. For me, stripping wasn't really an option because the only curves I have are from scoliosis. <laughs> Plus, I'm cool with my dad. Um, but, you know, if you strip, you do it to support a kid or get a degree, and, you know, those things are stupid. Um, and, you know, I don't consider myself sexy. I'm cute. You know, in like a prepubescent, I can keep a secret sort of way. You know? um, but uh, when I went in to apply for the waitressing job, the manager was like, yeah, we're actually interviewing people tomorrow, so when you come back in, just make sure you look camera ready. I was like, okay, camera ready, like, like just from the neck up? And she was like, what do you mean? I was like, you know, like, can I have grass in a forest, or do I need to pave paradise and put up a parking lot? You know what I'm saying? She's like, no, I don't know what you're saying. I was like, you know, like, can I save the rainforest? Or do I need to endanger my species? <laughs> you know what I mean? She's like, no, I don't know what you mean. I was like, can I let the Indians keep their land? <laughs> <laughs> was that the end of that? Um, Is there more? Or do I need to give them some smallpox? Or do I need <laughs> ah, that's very <laughs> funny. Yeah. You're very funny. You've been on the show a few times. Um, we know you as a dirty hippie comic. This yeah. is what we figured out about you. Yeah, you never and shower. I, I, I'm remember. I'm reminded because your Twitter handle is literally "dirty hippie comic." Yeah. And we found out that you really <laughs> are just a dirty hippie comic. You don't shower much. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to do it more. <laughs> I'm working on it. How's that been going for you? Is um, that hard? It it's hard, uh, but you know, I've been taking more because it's been so cold lately, and it heats me up. So. Shit keeps on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't you didn't you say you don't flush the toilet except once a day you just like keep on like going on top of it is like that true? over and over and over again i don't remember telling you that but i <laughs> i <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow uh, in weird. one of the creepiest moments of kill tony history <laughs> brian just guessed that this chick <laughs> doesn't flush all the time what kind of weird camera? I could tell. I could tell her personality is one you of those. You just let like. I mean, that so it feels like a compliment. Let me ask yeah. you a question. Yeah. You took a poop in the morning, right? You'd leave yeah. it there. I mean, and pee no, I flush when I poop. Poop. Yeah. But peas, you'll let. You'll Unless lie. It starts to smell. Because I just want to conserve water, and also we were. Wait, in we're not in a little. drought anymore. Are you going to change well, your house? We, we're never going to drought but again after what's like, happened here this past month. I think month. of people who need water. Let's face it. I don't want to hear that fucking word again. This rain has sucked. You're such Sorry. a bitch. I hate it. It's not. It's not it a bitch. It rains five days in six years. You're yep. like, it's enough. It has not been five enough. days. It's not been five enough. days. I, I know, know a, because I, I bought my brand new unbelievable car the week of Christmas, and it has a big, fat, giant sunroof that I've had closed since I fucking got it because it's rained every fucking day. In On this that note. Oh, fuck the environment, man. On that yeah. note, God bless all the homeless people out there in the rain. It's tough to be out there. Josh, so, what do you got your hand up? What's up? Oh, shit. Yeah, I got you, Josh. We know. 
What are you saying, Josh? That's the end of the episode. Cock blocker. Jo- jo- Josh, is Josh is the Josh party. Josh is the party. You've heard of You're Darren Carter, the party starter. Josh is the opposite of whatever that You're is. You're very funny. It's yeah. really yeah. funny. That was some great stuff. That means a lot. Very, very, you, very funny think, lines. Yeah. All the, the vagina hair stuff killed me. <laughs> yeah. It was really good. Thanks. Extremely well written. Extremely yeah. well delivered. Awesome Thanks. stuff. Uh, I, you know. Fast. I mean, you've always done good, but still, like, a, I could tell there's like a new, very confident swagger. You've been working oh, hard, thanks. doing a lot of spots. Um, I I perform a couple times a week. I try to write more than perform, like, because I I don't like going unless I have something new. So I I, I feel like you have a lot of pee in your toilet right now. Uh, <laughs> depends. On my how how long you been doing stand up now? Um, it's gonna go on five years in uh, May. Wow. You're yeah. very funny. Thank you. Thank there you. she goes, ladies and gentlemen. Dirty Hippie Comic, Kirsten Alberts, on Twitter at Dirty Hippie Comic, H-I-P-P-Y. Look what Ryan J. Ebelt did while you all sat there. Bunch of badasses. Ryan J. Ebelt drew tonight's episode. That art's at RyanJEbelt.com along with the official Kill Tony poster. Check out all my tour dates at TonyHinchcliffe.com. Patty Reagan has a new album this out. This is my fucking album. I'm yeah. serious. Please, yeah. for fuck's sake, yeah. I need say, something. Why don't you it's say the name of it? Life. Say the name of it it's again. It's called Bad Chad. It's Bad really, Chad. really good. It's really Pat good. Pat Reagan, P-A-T-R-E-G-A-N. Wait, did I spell that right? Yeah. 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 Jeremiah Watkins. Hey, I'm at Jeremiah Stand Up. Yep. Uh, you need to get a Twitter handle for Daisy. I don't know if I want to commit Daisy that Watkins. to it. Yeah. <laughs> Daisy Watkins. Someone's already got it right now. Probably. As soon as I said it, somebody just... <laughs> Roast Battle 2 is on Comedy Central. Jeremiah is killing yeah. it on there. Oh, Joel man. Jimenez is on Twitter at Mostly Sorry. Make sure you reach out to Jeremiah Watkins on social media. And, and watch uh, Comedy Central the 26th, 27th, 28th, yeah. and 29th. Yeah. Yeah, they're totally going to watch. Uh, Joe Rogan, thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Unbelievable. So fun much times, fun. as always. Love it. Thank you, live audience. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. We're going to turn and burn because the Ding Dong Show is up next.